Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Guys, it's just come over the wireless. Raja Shimba Kambuili has been sentenced to five months in jail. He's going to be fine. He's, pr he's probably going to do two and a half months, if that, and then he'll be out. The only thing is, the only problem is, you know, he's really racking up the convictions. I mean, not too long ago, he was convicted of fraud, served for that. Now he's been convicted of hate speech, which is a very serious crime and a problem. Now, right now, as we sit here, in retrospect, when we look back, to some of you, this may sound mundane. To some of you sitting here saying, no, but those are things he said during the campaign. And uh, why is it such a big deal? Honey, it's a big, bigger deal than you think it is. Let me begin by telling you that right now, and this is the example we all cite. This is the example we all use. Because it's a very practical example. Rwanda. Do you know that right now in Rwanda, you cannot use the phrase or the words Hutu and Tutsi. When you try to describe a fellow Rwandese, you can never use those two words. Those words are abolished in Rwanda. Did you know this? You can't walk up to if you touch Takuno. You know, sometimes when I'm doing my live vlogs, so hey, how are you? I'm fine. What tribe are you? In Rwanda, there's no such thing. They have abolished that type of rhetoric, that type of talk, precisely because of the age. When you use your when you, you, your, when you use your phone <laughs> as your main uh, transmission device, when people phone you, it cuts, the, it cuts the, the live. My apologies. This is precisely, precisely why the people of Rwanda have moved away from describing each other, each other using Hutu and Tutsi. Because it is the very reason they went through a hundred days of horror. The very reason that brother rose up against brother, cousin rose up against nephew, and vice versa, and on and Are we on? Can you hear me? Brother rose up against brother. Nephew rose up against cousin. Because of the issue of Hutu and Tutsi. When Kagame, Kagame sat in the seat of authority and power. He finally said, let's do away with this tribal talk. As we sit now, my brothers and sisters, in Rwanda, it is a crime to use Hutu and Tutsi to describe a fellow Rwandese. What they do accept over there is Rwanda. That's it. Rwandese. If you want to describe your fellow uh, 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 citizen, you say Rwandese. 
Now, you and I live in a country where we haven't experienced a tribal uprising. This is the reason to some of you, the sentence, the five month sentence of Bachishim Bakambuili for hate speech. Some of you may consider this as overbearing. It's, it's, it's heavy handed. Some of you may think that. Some of you may think that it's unfair. Honey, there is nothing unfair about this sentence. And let me be, be very clear. I'm not sitting here gloating. Okay, let's let's be clear, because I remember a few years ago when Chilofia Tayali, who was very instrumental in the conviction of Bakambuili, and in, in as far as the fraud case was concerned, Tayali really pushed that agenda. He really campaigned that Kambuili get get convicted, and he got what he wanted. And Tayali, Chilofia Tayali, is on record. He was a guest on some television show, and he was asked very pointedly, "Are you happy that Chishim Bakambuili has?" been arrested and, and convicted of the crime of fraud, Tayali very clearly and openly said, yes, I'm happy, I'm proud, I'm happy. I'm not sitting here happy, I'm just saying to you, it's a cautionary tale. It is a cautionary tale. The issue here is not whether or not someone is happy. We're not talking about happiness. What's happiness? When you say to someone, so now then what? That, that's, that's, an, that's, a, that's an irrelevant, redundant question. The question should be, is this case a cautionary tale? And the answer is yes. A cautionary tale is a story, a narrative that lends itself to teaching you a valuable lesson. What's the lesson here? The lesson is very clear. We should not be a country that tolerates tribalism in any form. Where there is no punishment, there is no lesson. You know, it's, it's like that old story. If you, if, if there is no, if your child keeps putting his hand by the fire, he's never going to learn his lesson until he gets burnt by the fire. There is no lesson, no progress without pain. That's just the way it is. That's how life works. So, so what we should be focusing on as a people now, as a collective, we should be looking at this case, this Chishimba Kambwili case, and saying, this is the direction our country should not be going. We should not be a people that are divided based on tribe. Now, you and I have to really, rec and this is why it's important. It's important to record things. History has to be recorded. You and I have to really look back and remember the things that Wachishimba Kamwili said on the campaign trail prior to the 2021 elections. The, some of the most inflammatory, some of the most vociferous, some of the most volatile words that tried to uh, invoke a sense of a rise against the Tongas. Wachishimba tried. He tried left, right, and center. He traversed this nation to and fro to convince, in an attempt to convince you, to convince you as the electorate, that this man hails from a tribe that is anathema. That this man hails from a tribe that, that leaves a bitter taste in our mouths as a people. Bakambwili tried to convince you that this man, by virtue of the fact that he is a certain tribe and that he hails from a certain region, based on that and that alone, Bakambwili tried to convince you 
that because of that he should not be president because of that he doesn't deserve to be president but oh how wrong he was they tried to stick the tag of tribalism on Hagain de Hichilema they failed they tried to smear him with the repugnant stench of tribalism but it couldn't stick it failed it landed with a hollow thud and today we have seen the fruits of those seeds that Makambuili tried to plant and instill in you. And here it is, the justice system says, no, no, we, you can't talk like that. You can't be that way. You can't have free range and say whatever the heck you want, all in the name of political prowess, when you know good and well that it is anathema, it's wrong, it's unfair, it's unzambian for you to preach tribalism and hide underneath a thin veneer of politics and say, no, this is just politics. No, it's not just politics. That's what landed Rwanda in trouble. Precisely this. So, so my point is this. Bakambuili dug his own grave, made his own bed. He now has to lay in it. That's the way that it is. And I, I believe any Zambian that tries to go down that same trajectory should meet the same fate. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? All right. He'll be fine. I mean, he'll sit in there for maybe two and a half months, if that, and he'll come out. Hopefully he will learn the lesson because these experiences serve to teach us lessons, especially you politicians. They serve to teach us valuable lessons. When Wakambwiri comes out, I'm hoping that he will come out with uh, as a different man, a man that no longer preaches tribalism, a man that, that, that has a sense of fair play, a man that doesn't is not self-aggrandized, a man that's not self-centered, a man that doesn't feel that he's the be-all and end-all, a man that doesn't feel that he's God's gift to Zambia, a man that stands under the umbrella of Zambianism. That's what we want. Okay, let's be clear. That's what we want. Zambianism. Zambianism. All right. Lastly, uh, Sean Tembo. Sean Tembo has lost his God-given, cotton-picking natural mind. Sean Tembo has the audacity. He has the goal. Brother has the unmitigated goal to sue the president for using that word, the street word, that means to beat severely. How many times has Sean Tembo insulted HH? You tell me. How many times? I even lost count. You know, I lost I lost complete interest in Sean Tembo. You know why? Because instead of Shadi Fula, I couldn't keep up. It became useless. The entire exercise of pursuing Sean Tembo on social media in terms of commenting on his insults and the insolence, it became odd. Why? Because there were too many. I could not keep up with that nonsense. Today, I hear that he has sued the current head of state for using a word, a street colloquialism that describes someone who wants to beat you and beat you severely to the point where you almost die. Sean Tembo in his foolishness, in his self-aggrandizing spirit and nonsense has gone, wasted the court's time to say the head of state has used a strict colloquialism terminology, therefore I am offended. How are you offended? When you were you are the father of insults, you were shown them. You are the father. You are the surrogate of insele. 
Insele resides within the cacophony of your heart. I'm telling you right now. Lelo wai matio watu tukoku. Watu kanaba president muevantu. Ati, ati, iyo edi, yoba womfye, yoba first street, yoba yi womfye, baka teka. Tule edi kukoti mwe. Watu kana, tule edi. Tule shiru we ton, shon tembo we shiru we. Uli shilu. You've lost your mind, Sean. What you need to do is take care of yourself in that. I won't say much. All right. I gotta go. I gotta go. Thanks for watching. Bye. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.